All right. Welcome to the Gritty Podcast. So I'm here with Casey Harbertson, and um, today we are going to talk about uh, our trip to New Zealand. If you had one word to describe New Zealand, Casey, well, what would it be? Um, majestic. The word majestic just comes to mind because it's like no other place I've ever been. Between the water and the mountains and the, the snow-capped Alps, it's just incredible country. And then, to me, what gives it that real epic and otherworldly feel is the fog. To, to it define the feeling of majestic that you have when you're there, you have these tall, incredibly steep, rugged mountains. You have stag running through the fog. You have tar um, piling through the fog all over the hillsides. You have Shammy living in the most incredibly interesting terrain. And I'll tell you, New Zealand literally leaves you. From the moment you land, you're in awe. On that first day, they spotted a tar down on the river bottom. And that was the first time I saw Sam and Sean actually get excited. Like, oh my gosh, we have a stud bull. That's what we're looking for. That's what we've been looking for all day when I'm on a stock. These are some things I would like to have. Okay. I would like to be able to come from above. I would like it to be very steep, at least steep enough that, you know, they're, they don't, they're not looking up or they don't, they don't see me coming so I can get very close. I would like the wind to be solid blowing down canyon or up canyon, whatever it is, but to be consistent. And when you get that close to like a river bottom in general, it sucks the wind in one direction. So you figure out which way that's going and, and you make your approach. So I want the wind good. I want it to be steep and, and cliffy. And I want a loud river <laughs> covering the sound of me kicking rocks off hills and everything as I get close. All those pieces were all together in that magic moment. So Sam and I got on it fast, started cruising down that hill, uh, got in position, came down right where the tar were. It was a great stock. Everything was going according to plan. And for some reason, I was thinking this was going to be rather easy. Well, Sam peeks over and I think like 15 tar scatter just everywhere. And when they saw that, they didn't wait around, stall, look at you like maybe a mule deer in Colorado. Like, what is that? They bolt. What was awesome, though, is as they spilled over the hill and they crossed the river at the bottom. And on the opposite side was it just a sheer cliff wall. And and uh, we got to watch the whole group just climb a cliff. That was amazing. I mean, the country, it was my first taste of what that country looks like. First taste of uh, a tar close up. And, and a first taste of how switched on they are. That first day, the first day I got to actually let an arrow fly, um, that it was still foggy that day. And sure enough, um, we finally, through the fog, uh, I was with Sam and Keith. I think you and Sean were. We had stayed lower. You guys went higher because mm -hmm. we saw a ton of tar down on that lower finger. And you guys kind of went after the tar on the upper part yeah. of that finger. And as we got higher, it got dense. The fog got dense. And so we're walking along, walking along on a, on a slope on, the, on a side hill. And, man, we, we just came on a group of tar. I was pretty relaxed at that point because, you know, it's like you're confident, right? Yeah. You're going down. And 
and uh, just as I was taking the shot, just before it broke, the tar took a step, shot breaks. We couldn't tell where the arrow went. It looked like it went to the left, Sam said. And, of course, that freaked him out. And he bounced down the hill a little bit, and I range him again. It's something like 70 yards. So I come to full draw again and take my time. And, but I let that thing go, and as soon as the shot broke, it jumped like a couple of feet down the hill and he wasn't even standing remotely in the area of where the arrow where he was when the arrow released uh and and they were like we're out that's twice you know we're out so that was that was an intense moment um it was it was a it was a frustrating moment and it wasn't the last there were more to come (laughs) just as archery can make you feel it just has you know it's just challenging day three was when you got a shot so what we decided to do is there was a nice bench that we could go sit on a kind of glass uh Kind have of have lunch. a vantage, have lunch, and have a vantage point down on this matted area that we could see all these bulls and, and nannies that are kind of feeding through, and you'd see glimpses of them. And, and we're having a nice lunch. And Sam decided to uh, to kind of take a, a position about a hundred yards above us. And all of a sudden, you just see Sam like. But so we, so he comes, stands up on this perch broadside. Actually, no, kind of quartering too. And it's kind of now or never because you're probably not going to catch up to him. Oh, there's no way. They're way too fast. Truth that we hit or miss. That, my friends, is a clean miss. Sweet. But I'm glad we found that to know. Because we found that tar down in the bottom down here, and he's just fine. So that makes a lot of sense. You just had you had a, a rough freaking go. Yeah, I just wanted a calm, steady shot where the animal doesn't know I'm there and I can just execute. And I got that. At that point, we were just kind of sitting there going, well, what do we do now, you know? And we look across... And right where we were having lunch, just 40 minutes earlier, a bull tar is pushing Nanny up the ridge. Looks like that tar and that Nanny are going to come right to us. So, sure enough, we, we settle in. We're in some dense bushes, some matagaries there, and we're, like, waiting. I got the Garmin, and I'm, I'm ranging. And Anyway, it's 80 yards to this bull. I have an 80-yard pin. It's just perfect. I come to full draw. And I'm just trying to settle in for this shot. And this bull is standing like perfectly broadside. But as I sat there getting ready to shoot and 80 yards 
is a long shot. But I sat there thinking, you know, be more patient, Ryan. Be patient. I think they're going to come closer. I think I'm going to get a better shot. So I let down. Sure enough, that bull's like gets impatient and he just walks off and leaves the nanny. So the shot breaks and the tar just spins and runs down the hill. And and uh, I turn to Sam and I'm looking at Sam and he's looking at me and we, we run and we peek over the hill and, and Keith comes with me and we get our eyes on, on this tar and he looks hurt. He looks pretty, he, he even when the shot broke, I mean, it, he bolted in a way it looked like he was hit. He he ran down the hill and he kind of looks a little hurt and I'm, I'm expecting him, I'm waiting for him to drop. I'm thinking he's going to drop any second. I'm watching and I'm watching and he doesn't drop, doesn't drop. And he just keeps walking down the hill and he doesn't drop. And I realize I didn't hit him. Nothing, huh? It's frustrating, Sam. So is life. I gotta quit missing, Sam. <laughs> These tar are really getting to me, like... You just say like a little bit of a... No, but for real, like, the adrenaline is increasing with each miss. Yeah. Oh, exactly. And then you start doubting yourself. Oh, this is brutal. When you miss that wallaby, you should have just put your bow back in the track. I thought about it. thought about it. Well, when we arrived here and Sam said, I've only had two bow hunters ever kill a tar. Isn't that what you said? Do a, a three out of three in the first hunt. That's the trip. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. I'm feeling tar rage. Seriously. We know tar rage. Tar rage. Well, you should all go home, have some cherry cola together, and just reminisce <laughs> no, about today's. It's raspberry cola? Sorry, Thank raspberry you. cola, and we can all talk about the day. Oh, I thought you said cherry cola, like cheerful. I'll say, I'll say my. But you were saying cherry, but you, you say it wrong. Che cherry. What we say is you're, you're positive and you're negative for the day. Today? Yeah. Well, you don't have to say you're negative. Yeah, what was your positive? The negative was that big fat swing and a miss. Oh, yeah. At, you know, 60 yards. What, yesterday or today? Today. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know. Mostly everything is overridden by tar rage. Like all emotions. They'll get you. They'll get you. My positive was my um, Ignite breakfast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My negative is I don't have any right now. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough plug right there. It's commercial. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think definitely the, the bars. Bumper uh, bars? Bumper oh, bars. Boy. I've still got three in my pack. Those are, we should just eat those because we're depressed right now and that would <laughs> up our spirit. Yeah. Do you want them? I do. So we had one more day and I got the bow. But now it's like rifle time. It wasn't a hard decision for me to break out the rifle. It really wasn't. And so I'm able to just glass. And glassing is fun. Yeah. And we're spotting all these tar. And, and then right across from us, about 700 yards, a, a nice bull is following a bunch of nannies and it starts coming down the mountain into the canyon, off the cliff. On our half day morning of, of, of that last, I was able to take that tar and, and I'm looking across the canyon and there's no other word to describe it, but epic, majestic. I mean, it just, 
it's beautiful the, the the view the country and so we pack up and start making our way over there and literally it's it's like straight down and straight up Just to be able to walk up and put your hands on something like that for the first time. I mean, I can remember the first deer, the first elk, the first bear. It never ceases to amaze me. The first of any species that I've pursued and taken, it just, it's a special moment. What do you think? I, uh, I'm ready to embark on this New Zealand adventure. Um, with your spikes? Yeah, with my snow chains. You gotta admit, they're cool. But we're going hunting with these two guys. We don't really speak the same language. It's kind of hard to... Um, the language barrier there has is been a... very difficult. That's just... Watch and chops. Watch out for um, orcs and hobbits. All right. There's a lot of there's a lot of hobbits in this area. Yeah. Oh, no, Jordan's not here. Free range <laughs> hobbits. Orcs and hobbits. <laughs> okay. We are in Middle Earth. Watch out for the grey wizard. <laughs> 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 